Alrighty. So we're in our practice book on lesson 25, length, not practice, instructional, excuse me, page 270. We're looking at Julia. Her family is visiting an amusement park. A sign says a person must be at least 45 inches tall in order to board the ride. Julia knows her sister, her younger sister, was three and a half feet tall at her last doctor's appointment and has grown four inches since then. Is Julia's sister tall enough to board the ride? Well, number A, or letter A, says describe how Julia can figure out if her sister is tall enough to board the ride. Well, first, Julia has to find out how tall she is in inches now, right? So first... She needs to convert the feet to inches because we can't we can't compare two different units of measurement like that. So we need to take that three and a half feet and we're gonna have to convert it into inches. She then needs to see if her height in inches is greater than or equal to 45 inches. So then she needs to compare her, excuse me, her sister, sister's length to the 45 inches she needs to be in order to ride the ride. B says, what unit does Julia need to use to find out if her sister is tall enough to board the ride. Well, we already said that. We said that, well, we need to convert these feet into inches because we can't compare two different units of measurement. And so, since our comparison is in inches, we need to change this to inches. Now, C is asking us to go back. And you can always go back to the instructional video or we can just do this now. How many inches are in each of these lengths? Well, remember, one foot is the same as saying 12 inches. Three feet, in order to go um, from one foot to 12 inches, three feet, we're going to multiply three times 12, and we get 36 inches. A half a foot is how many inches? Well, remember, one foot is 12 inches, so a half of 12 would be what? 6 inches. Now it's asking how many inches are in 3 and a half feet. Show how you got your answer. Well, we know up here that 3 feet was the same as saying 36 inches. And we knew that a half a foot is the same as 6 inches. So we're just going to add those together. And when we add those together, we're going to get 42 inches. Whoop, sorry guys. Now it's saying how many inches tall is Julia's sister now? Is she tall enough to board, board the ride? Well, she is 42 inches here, but we didn't add in how much she grew. She grew four inches since her last doctor's appointment. So we're going to add four more. When we add four more inches, we get 46 inches. Then we need to write our comparison sentence. We have 46 inches compared to 45 inches. Is she tall enough? Yes, she is. Remember, alligator always eats the bigger number. And we want to put this in a sentence. Julia's sister is tall enough to ride the ride because 46 is bigger than 45. And I kind of ran off on my page, but I always do. Oh, you just can't help it. Alrighty. Now on the next page, page 271, it kind of breaks it down using bar models. And feel free to read through that 
Sometimes for me, it is easier just to do it this way. But if you are a visual person and you want to see those models, you see that they gave, they broke it down. Each of these bars is one foot, so we have three feet. And then they took the half, they added it, and then that's how they come up, came out with the 42 inches. And if you look, each of these bars has 12 inches in it, be, or because each of these squares is the same as one inch, two inch, three inch, so on. Looking at the reflection, it says, explain why it is important to look at the units for the measurement in a problem before you start to solve the problem. Well, we've been over this before. You cannot add or subtract, whoops, unlike units of measurement. We cannot compare them. We have to make them all the same unit. For, for some problems, you might even have to first convert some of the measurements so that all the units are the same, like we did here. We had to convert our three and a half feet into inches before we even got to, you know, determine whether or not she's going to be tall enough or not. There we go. All right, so that's the instructional. Let's go to the practice. This is page 269 inside your practice book. You see you have your example here. This is showing feet, feet and inches, which is a great chart. We'll probably use this again. This is being used in the, pro in the problem, Tess needs 75 inches of ribbon for a project. She has six feet of ribbon. Does she have enough ribbon? How much extra ribbon does she have? Or how much more ribbon does she need? It says use the table to convert from larger units, feet, to the smaller units, inches. Remember, one foot is the same as 12 inches. The table shows that six feet, she has six feet, so six feet is the same as 72 inches. Since 72 is less than 75 is what she needs, Tess does not have enough ribbon. She needs three or more, three more inches of ribbon. Going down to number one, a concrete walkway is six meters long. How many centimeters long is the walkway? Well, first we want to finish this table. Well, we've done a table very similar to this. Actually, I think we've done a table exactly like this before. Remember when we go from centimeters to meters, our equation is going to look like however many meters times 100 because there's 100 centimeters in each meter. So we just need to input 2 in, as the M. 2 times 100 is 200. And you keep going for 3, 4, 5, and 6. 3 times 100 is 300. 4 times 100 is 400. 5 times 100 is 500. And 6 times 100 is 600. The walkway is 6 meters long. So if, in, if we wanted to know in centimeters, the walkway would be 600 centimeters long. Now when it's asking us to explain how to use multiplication to solve problem one, well, we used the formula m times 100. We inputted the number of meters in for M for M and solved. I'll flip it back one more time, please. Oh, you couldn't see that, could you? Here you go. Here you go. All right. The back of the page. Now we're on same same place. Practice book, page two hundred and seventy. Number three, the cooler at a softball game holds five quarts of sports drinks. How many cups of sports drinks does the cooler hold? Well, for each quart, we have four cups. And if we were gonna, mul if we wanted a formula, it would be quart times four equals cups. So all we need to do is input however many quarts we have into our formula. 
that would be 5 times 4 equals 20. 20 cups of sport drink. Sports drink. Number four, Mark brought two one liter bottles of water to basketball practice. He drank 1,500 milliliters of water during practice. How many milliliters of water does he have left? Well, our formula is going to be liters times a thousand equals milliliters, millimeter, milliliters, excuse me. We need to input our liters. So technically we have two one liter bottles. So this is going to be two. Our liter is going to be two times 1,000 equals 2,000, but we're not done. It says he drank 1,500 milliliters of water during practice. They want to know how much he has left. So that means we're going to subtract. So we had 2,000 milliliters, and we're going to take away 1,500 milliliters. Remember, you're putting your unit of measurement. We're going to borrow. That becomes a 500. Zero, zero. So we have 500 milliliters left. I usually like to circle. If my problems get that conjumbled together, I usually try not to. But when they do, I usually try and circle what, which is my answer. Number five, write an expression to convert kilograms to grams. Let K stand for kilograms. Well, that's exactly what we were doing up here. So all we need to do, one kilogram equals 1,000 grams. So K times 1,000 equals the grams. Write an expression to convert pounds to ounces. Same deal. We're going to let P stand for pounds, and we're going to multiply it by 16 in order to get our ounces. It says, look at problem, number seven says, look at problems five and six to answer the questions below. How many grams are in four kilograms? Well, we're going back up to here. We're just going to replace our K with four. So four times a thousand equals four thousand grams. And for B, we're going to look at number six. We're ha how many ounces are in seven pounds? So we're going to replace our P with seven, and we're going to multiply it by 16. Seven times six is 42, carry our four. Seven times one is seven, plus the four, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. 112 ounces. All right, now we're going into our review. It says this should be numbers and operations, fractions still, unit six, practice. Number one, what is the value of four seven tenths in decimal form? Well, remember that four is a whole number. So what side of the decimal is it going to fall on? It's going to fall on the left, right there in the ones column. We have seven tenths. Well, remember when we're talking decimals, we have, let's say, hundreds, tens, ones, and then we have the decimal point, tenths, and hundredths. And remember how I always told you that the fraction name tells you where the digit goes in the place value. Well, this says seven tenths. So it's going to be in that first place value after the decimal. So it's going to look like this. And you can always put a zero as a placeholder to show that, no, I do not have any hundredths. Putting the zero here does not change this value. If we were thinking about this as money, this would be $4.70. Or if we were just thinking it as a number, 0.70. It doesn't change. Number two, find the correct numerator for the equivalent fractions. So this is talking about equivalent fractions, and we have a couple strategies that we can use to solve these. The first strategy that I want to focus on is, is working backwards. So we went from a 4 to a 12. Now remember, if we multiply fractions, whatever we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. So what do we multiply 4 by in order to get 12? 
12 divided by 4 equals 3. So if we multiply by 3 to the bottom, we need to multiply by 3 to the top. So our numerator should be what? 2 times 3 is 6. Number 3. Which sentence correctly compares 2 ninths and 3 twelfths? So you can cross multiply in order to check this. 2 times 12 is 24. 9 times 3 is 27. So are they equal? No. Is 3 twelfths less than 2 ninths? No, because 27 is bigger than 24. So 2 ninths is going to be less than 3 twelfths. Number four, we're looking at a number line. It says show where each number is located on the number line. Maybe we should zoom in for this. All right. So we have point 0.38 and point 0.6. Well, remember, the bigger my tenth place digit is, the closer it is to one. Our intervals are one, two, three, four. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Our interval is 10 because there are 10 dashes before we get to a hole. So point 38 will probably be close between point 30 and point 4. So if this was point 1, point 2, point 3, Point four. So 38 is going to be like right here, right before the 40. And then the 6 is going to be right on the 6. So this would be 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. So who's closest to 1? The point 6, making the point 6 bigger. You could also look at this as fractions. 0.38 as a fraction would be 38 hundredths. 0.6 as a fraction would be 6 tenths, which is the same as 60 hundredths. Uh, my denominators are the same. So who has more pieces? Just like that. And number five, Oscar and Mark go to the art store. Oscar buys 14 of the drawing supplies on his list. Mark buys 25 of the supplies on his list. Who bought more supplies? Justify your thinking. So they go to the art store. Oscar, I like to always write these out, buys 14. Mark buys 25. Let's look at our answers. Mark bought, Mark, so who bought more supplies? Mark, because fifths are larger or are bigger than fourths. B, Oscar, because when you compare the numerators, one is more than two. C, it cannot be determined because fractions relate to a whole and you don't know the size of each list. Can I make this into fractions yet? No. I know that Oscar bought 14 and Mark bought 25, but how much was on their list? We don't know. The trick questions. This spiral review has a lot of trick questions in it. <laughs> it gets y'all thinking though. Get your brains going. Alright, back page and then we're done. Monday will be a wrap. All you'll have left to do is your iReady time if you have access to iReady. Alright, which expression correctly compares 0.8 and 0 0.80? Well, what did I say? I told you before that having that place value there does not change it. Think of these as in, in fractions. 8 tenths. 8 tenths. They're the same. They are the same. So you're looking at C. Select all the fractions that are equivalent to 0 0.6. Well, we know that 6 tenths, because this is a 6 in the tenth spot. Woo. We know that's not right, because that's an improper fraction. We know that this isn't right, because this is smaller than 6 tenths. Here we go. 60 hundredths. And we know that that's not it, and that's not it. All right, we can check by saying 6 tenths and change that to decimal. Is that the same? Or 60 hundredths 
is the same as 6 tenths, so it must be the same as 0. 0.6. Number 8. Sam looks at the model shown and says that 2 thirds is equal to 8 twelfths. It says choose the statement that is correct. So we have two models here we need to look at and we need to decide if they're equivalent. Let's look at our answers. A says Sam is incorrect because 2 thirds is less than 8 twelfths since there are 2 thirds and 8 twelfths. That doesn't make a lot of sense. B. Sam is incorrect because 2 thirds is more than 8 twelfths since thirds are bigger than twelfths. Hmm. Sam is correct because twelfths are four times smaller than thirds. Or D, Sam is correct because thirds and twelfths are the same size pieces. If you get confused with that lingo, there's a really quick and easy way to see if these are equivalent. You can always go back and cross multiply. Two thirds times 8 twelfths, 8 times 3 is 24, 12 times 2 is 24. You can look at it visually. I have th 2 thirds and 8 twelfths. Look at the area shaded. Do I have the same amount left over? Do I have the same amount shaded? Yes, I do. So they are equivalent. So we want... Sam is correct with 12 or four times. We want D. Oops, sorry. Hang on one second, guys. It's on some other. I'll get back to you in just a second, Kylie. All right. Create. Whoop. We're here. Number nine. Create a fraction with a denominator of 100 that is equivalent to three tenths. Well, if we want to get three tenths. To a fraction with a denominator, what do we multiply by? We multiply by 10. What we multiply to the bottom, we must do to the top. So 30 hundredths. And I'm going to have you guys do this last one on your own. I will go through the answer on it tomorrow, though. Alrighty, that was the wrap-up for Monday, week two, day one. If you have any questions or concerns, don't be afraid to... Um, Reach out to me, and I will try and help you to the best of my ability. I'll see you later.